Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy, a very happy, a very nice and warm Monday morning from over here in Helsinki, Finland. As always, wish you well, wish you the best of the best. And with Bitcoin doing very little in the overnight hours, we actually do have quite a few things to be speaking on. And let's get in a live scene right here, right now, wasting no more time as ain't nobody got time for that. Anyways, <laughs> over here, uh, Bitcoin putting in a little bit of what appears to be a local top at this uh, 3650-ish area. Now in the lower time frames, this is where we'll be living right now as this is where all the action is actually going on and there actually are quite a few things to be speaking on in the lower time frames and we still have this ascending trend line that bitcoin has been living under for the past uh what is it about three months now which has been governing our lower highs in fact it has it has governed the last little uh, spike high that we put in on friday and as long as bitcoin's below there uh don't want to be getting too damn excited i know that a lot of people are declaring that the bear market's over and that it's back onwards and upwards, and perhaps it might be. But <laughs> first things first, I like to actually see something change around from the lower time frame. So this would be the first step to actually uh, initiating something a little bit more significant in the way that I look at it. And if Bitcoin could get back above this, uh, 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 take out this trend line back above, uh, let's call it 3710, 3720 on GDAX, uh, will change depending upon your exchange. Actually, you know what? We can go over to my BitMexican chart over here as I have just, I've, I've completely wiped everything uh, as I like to do every once in a while. And we can just start over here, which actually does have a little bit better of a read on this. In fact, you can see a, a clear and obvious spike to that resistance, which was uh, which was rejected by bears so far. Again, doesn't mean that that uh, that Bitcoin can't get back above it. But what it does mean, what it does mean more importantly, is that as long as we're below it, no change of behavior, even from this perspective. Now, of course, if Bitcoin does get above this area, does that mean, does that, does that, mean that it's time to declare the bear market over no my criteria for that is a little bit more i need to see a weekly dollar both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average which is all the way at 41 uh 20 ish area uh, we'll go over that in a bit um a little bit more detail but for now i do want to stay on the lower time frames as the four hour is printing some bearish divergence on your four hour rsi right over here uh major divergence actually between this this area and this area as price action puts in a slightly higher high on this spike um to open I, i'm guessing that was uh, that was when cme's open so price action could could uh, could come back up as cme opened the day around where spot closed at this area on Friday if that makes sense um so we've already fulfilled that there's there uh, there's no gap to really be played unless unless you've got this short right here um, at that uh, 3650 a share if you did that well hey not bad very easy position to play and you know really right now the only <laughs> I actually have no position open right now but I <laughs> I really wish I was I was awake for that because that would have been the most beautiful position I will be entering a position um, later today if I can get any entry above 36 anywhere around 3620 I'd actually like to take a short and uh, and use this to manage risk upon 36 uh, uh, 50 right right here as long as we're below there I would like to hold that position for a small uh, small scalp trade uh, probably heading back down into the low 3500 region um, I'd imagine if uh, if all goes as planned now of course it's just a trade it's just a risk reward opportunity and that's why I'd want to wait if, if we could get a, one more pop back up into this range anywhere around 36 uh, 20 36 30 to mitigate the risk uh, portion of that equation um, especially if I'm looking for somewhere down in the 3530 to 3500 even range uh, that would be uh, completely fine as far as risk reward opportunity goes for myself um of course it's not financial advice i'm not a financial advisor and if the fc is listening well don't go fuck yourself but please leave me alone <laughs> anyways um you know, looking at this area, uh, it does look to me like our like our medium to low time frame oscillators are turning down. We got our four hour Stokes uh, taking a nosedive, uh, reaching for the edge of the bearish control zone uh, after getting kicked out of the bullish control zone. I believe that this is uh, that this is apparent all the way up to the ten hour. Yeah, ten hour having a fresh cross down, and twelve hour is still actually having momentum up. But there is something to be aware of on the twelve hour as we are at this nice resistance. Remember that nice resistance around thirty seven uh, ten, thirty seven twenty, whatever it is. Uh, uh, on the 12 hour stokes here you do see a nice trend line forming in fact a very important trend line because not only is this telling us about where we're where we're typically finding resistance but also look at where it's coming in around at it's coming in around at the edge of the bullish control zone so if the bulls are rejected from taking control here according to uh, according to my stokes um, which again i do have some different uh some different uh, settings on them 
then I'd be looking for a price action to, at the very least, fall back down into uh, around this 35, 10, 35, 20, whatever, you know, whatever low 3,500 range it is. Um, as we are also having some bearish divergence on the RSI on your, tw or sorry, no, we are not. We are not having bearish divergence on the 12 hour. I believe it's only up to the 10 hour. Yeah, 10 hour right over here is showing some bearish divergence on this guy as well. Um, typically speaking, when I do get that, I do see a test back down to the yellow 21 exponential. Um, so again, you know, if, if I am playing playing a position like that, I, I, I like it for a trade. I don't really want to take it here because if it does end up uh, going into the not working category, then, you know, it's it's risking a little bit too much. I mean, you'd be risking like, what, 50, 60 bucks to find out if it's not going to work on, you know, if, if entering right here, that that's not good enough for me. That's that's not a winning setup, or at least it's not it's not risk that I would be comfortable with taking. Uh, but hey, you know, as long as you're below this area, below this uh, descending trend line, you know, that's, that's going to be my bias. Doesn't, again, doesn't mean that Bitcoin can't get back above it. And of course, course, we should actually talk about what happens. Where is it likely to go to if Bitcoin does get back above it? Well, again, making the assumption that uh, that 37, uh, what do we want to call it on BitMexico? About 3720, actually. Uh, if that does get taken out, then where's the next uh, big resistance? Well, I suppose you could say about 3850, which I was discounting before. I I, I just didn't uh, just didn't really <laughs> consider it. Um, sometimes gets lost in the way. I know I said if Bitcoin breaks back above 3720, it's probably going to be a, uh, a quick shot to, to 4,000 once again. Uh, I take that back. I do see that this 30 3850 area is of importance because not only do we just have a nice horizontal trend line coming right around there, but this was also the breakdown point of this symmetrical triangle that Bitcoin put in at the end of December, early January. So as long as Bitcoin is below that area, I am actually looking for the uh, for the measure move on this um, on this symmetrical triangle to get hit uh, to uh, to get hit essentially, um, which would be pointing all the way down to 3250. So that is about 100 bucks off of our current low uh, that we put in last week. And you can see that uh, it would also, you know, it also coincide with this nice horizontal trend line, which is also the 10 hour 200 exponential. So when all these things kind of come into confluence with uh, together with uh, with each other, I would imagine at the very, 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 very least it does uh, sell off on the first pass. Um, doesn't mean it can't get back above. But there is there there is something to be aware of there. So you know if you are in long trades or or if I was taking a long trade, which I probably won't, um, even if it does break 3720, uh, I would be letting go of some at the very least there. Uh, and then yes, and then after that, then 4,000 is the next area of interest as far as I'm concerned. Maybe even a little bit above there, um, perhaps around 40, 50 ish area. Now here's the thing, and here's the thing why <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing why I'm so fucking redone it. Sorry, I. <laughs> uh, the reason why I am going in, into this with a short bias is because, well, you know, first things first, all the things that I look for on a major bottom, on a major mark cycle low are not, are, are essentially not present. I went over that in detail during yesterday's uh, over hour long video um, in the long term analysis playlist. So if you want the full on entendre on that, we'll definitely go check out the playlist titled long term analysis. For now, I'll just kind of wrap it up in a few sentences. First things first, the volume on the low is not really indicative of what I want to see on a major mark cycle low. The time spent at the low is certainly not indicative as well. The, the multiple chance is to buy the low within a few percent of the low is is completely asinine as, as far as I'm concerned. The percentage reaction, the reaction off the lows is not consistent with the way that Bitcoin typically plays out its major mark cycle lows. And also the MVT signal, not necessarily signaling a buy. And also we have uh, historical volatility rank disagreeing as well as it being a major mark cycle low, as well as a few other things. Um, uh, but of less importance to me. Those are the big ones that I'm looking for. And uh, zero for five or zero for six on all of those uh, is not good enough. In fact, I do I do now put in six because what I really don't want to see is Bitcoin giving giving buyers a second chance to buy quote unquote the low. That that is not how markets are uh, operate in my um, in my experience. When you put in a low, it typically does not it typically does not return to that area to give people a second chance. It's not like saying, hey guys, I know you missed it the first time, but you know what, <laughs> you know what. We'll just give you one more time. Just forget about those pesky market movers and all their fills. They are going to be nice this time and let you get in at a very low price within even a few percent of the, of the prior low. No, that's that's not how markets typically play out. Um, and especially with Bitcoin, he has been quite aggressive. Uh, in fact, the last time that we actually put in a mark cycle low at the 2014-2015 mark, it was quite literally defended by about 30%, over 30%. I think it was like 35%. We can just go back here really quick and um, and, and actually confirm this because that is important to do. But this, this spike down right there and then Bitcoin never really getting, yeah, about 30% within it to 
that next week and then really you know 45 percent essentially uh, if you go dildo body to dildo body over here uh in 2019 what we just did is uh market was pretty damn uh, pretty damn nice huh Six and a half percent. Six and a half percent. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about buying the low the first time. It's like you just have to think about it a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, this is, you know, it, it shows a complete lack of understanding of how major market cycles, uh, market cycles work um, when people purport these sort of myths, um, at least in my experience. And I've noticed this across all different trading assets, you know, Forex, managing net money, commodities, and where I come from more professionally speaking as, a, uh, as, as an equity options market maker, um, you know, assets typically have general rules in the way that they play out market cycles and then their own little specific personalities and bitcoin has shown its personality in the past and uh, this is inconsistent with what we typically see um also i do want i do just want to quickly do i want to harp on this i don't want to harp on the mbt signal right now i don't want to harp on it at all actually you know if people want to believe that the mbt signal works on a weekly fucking let them you know it it's like this information this information is free all you have to do is literally confirm it yourself literally just look into the fucking underpinnings of how that indicator is made literally just back test it and you'll have your answer you'll have your <laughs> it's one of it's one of those things man i don't even know why i uh I, I should not even mention it really okay so back on over to our bit mexican chart and down to the lower time frame because that's where all the fun is happening uh just because i don't believe that the low of the market is in um doesn't mean you can't have a nice rally in between you certainly can you 100 percent can in fact i mean we had a we had a phenomenal rally off the uh uh, a relatively phenomenal rally um, off of the current low at 3,100. I mean, all the way to four, you know, 4,200. That's basically over 30% rally. It's incredible. That's fucking incredible in the span of a week or two. I mean, that's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Um, but <clears throat> is that the ultimate low? Probably not. Uh, so here, while while we're in this range, you know, what is Bitcoin essentially doing? Well. To me, it looks like we're doing something like this. We're doing some sort of a triangular consolidation, something like this. And because it is coming off of a large downtrend, these things are typically continuation patterns. So that would imply a more bearish resolution. Uh, some sort of a, if you want to get super specific, call it a, call it a bear pennant, call it whatever the fuck you want. And also, sorry, cons before I move on, consistent with this 3850 area as being a potential, um, a, a, a potential next resistance, it does match up with the wicks, which I typically don't care all that much about but when we are talking about you know hunty type areas that is you know that is something to be aware of um but but hey it actually does perfectly meet up in this 3850 area so again i'll just leave that right there i'm gonna get rid of it or actually no i'm gonna get rid of it because it's kind of an eyesore um but yeah you know i my my main point is that i want to have a tempered um a, a tempered analysis of what we're looking at and yes i do want to be bullish i do want to you know believe me i want i want the fucking market to turn around just like anyone else because i actually do this as a living and it's much more easy it's so much more easy when the market's just straight up you don't need to be a professional trader to make money in a straight up market um you, I mean, you don't. You don't really need to know all that much, to be quite honest. Uh, but hey, you know, as long as we're in this area, I will be running with that assumption. Not only is this thirty-seven uh, twenty, thirty-seven hundred area uh, uh, declining resistance consistent with with what with with, with with what has been governing our lower highs all the way through this formation, but also it is something incredibly uh, uh, incredibly more important, and that is going over here to the monthly. And the monthly shows the monthly shows that the green fifty-five exponential is right there, and so. Far far we are actually pushing off that green 55 exponential which is currently at 3670 we have a small wick above that's completely fine we could have a wick all the way all you know all the way up into the 4000 region as long as we're kind of below the the high of the prior wick at 4112 on a stamp from last month Feb or sorry january um but as as long as we're closing monthly dildos below this green 55 exponential this is this is pressure on and that and to me this is probably I mean, th this is a this is a strong candidate for being the high of this rally. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as long as we're living below this area, that is that is kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, do we have new lows as far as the monthly goes? We do not. Uh, we do not, except for on Bit Mexico and Bit Finex, we will have new lows. So that that is what makes this a little bit more difficult. Uh, officially speaking, if I am looking at it like this, I want to see us take out the low of this guy in December, uh, which is all the way at 31.22. For no questions asked, hey, it's time for a flush down to the mid 2000s. Um, so again, you know, looking at this chart, I do, uh, you know, I, I do see a lot of things that, uh, 
look quite nasty. I mean, I'm looking at the red 10 symbol moving average and I'm, and I'm looking at the yellow 20 exponential moving average. They are converging on each other incredibly rapidly. And that is typically a very bad sign as far as longer term trends go. Again, again, where I come from as a as a market maker in equity options, I used to, you know, I used to trade equities um, on the floor of New York Stock Exchange Arca and what we would do to denote if something was generally bullish or generally bearish is look at the monthly. And depending upon where it's trading in relation to the 21 exponential, that was that was my that was kind of my mark for that. And then I'd use the 10 simple or the nine exponential as well. Um, and, and to kind of denote, okay, well, how are you know, how mature are we within that cycle? And as you can see, we are really just in the initial stages of this probably crossing. So that is uh, that is certainly concerning. That is very concerning. Um, and again, I, I, I want to be very clear that this this phase of the mark cycle can really take a long time. Um, it's it I can't ever say how long it's going to take. I know that I do the what I call the matrix on the long term analysis videos. That's more speculative than anything. It's not something that I make active trading decisions off of myself. What I can say is, though, is that as long as we are cl especially closing monthly totals below the green 55 exponential and and more importantly, opening and closing weekly totals below the 200 exponential, um, I have no reason to believe that 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 the bear market's over. Nothing. I, I mean, there's, you know, again, it's, we are literally just filled out a range so far. Nothing's changed. I mean, even just looking at the volume characteristics, but while I'm here, I do want to say that, hey, if, uh, if the green 55 does reject, I mean, the next area that I'd be looking at as far as a month goes is, well, right here around 2400, 2450-ish area. Um, again, we might go a little bit deeper into that later, but for now, I do want to go back to, uh, back to the weekly. So if you want to make this simple for yourself, if you want to make this simple, all you have to do is put on a 200 simple moving average and a 200 exponential moving average. And here's what I can say. As long as you are opening and closing weekly totals below the 200 exponential moving average, this purple moving average here, hard to be bullish. You haven't done anything different. And that's all the way again at 41.20. So you can imagine that even if Bitcoin does break this smaller or sorry, this this consolidation, this triangular consolidation that we're currently living in above, which wouldn't take all that much to get it back above 37.20, you know, it still has a lot of work to do. It still has, you know, another <laughs> another 400, 500 bucks of work to do before it actually cha starts changing around some pictures. By the same token, um, this 200 simple moon average to the downside for the bears, don't get too excited either. You know, until that breaks, it's kind of inappropriate to be talking about the lower targets although I do think that they happen. My opinion is that they happen from a technical analysis perspective, from a trading perspective. It is, you know, it's it, it was the same thing as what I was saying at 6,000 here. It's like, okay, until you actually break 6,100, you know, yes, I am bearish. Yes, I do believe that this does break, but until you actually break that area, I don't really want to be having the position to go along with that. Now, with all of that said, I'm actually... Uh, and I should actually announce this because I know a lot of people have been following this, um, even though this is not a signals group and I really don't want to purport this sort of a thing, but I should probably say this. I actually am getting rid of my um, my my short, my short that I started on, um, from 6,300 uh, here. The reason why I'm doing that is because I initiated those on the March futures, which expire in about a month. And the premium on those, or sorry, the discount on those is rapidly dissipating. So what I'd rather do is I'd rather close them while there's still a good dis discount on them, meaning that I get a better price uh, to close, and then I can reopen on this next segment that uh, that we're playing out right now. So I will be trying to trying to trade out um, at the current level, at the current you know 3650 level, if I can get it right back around there again, uh, like like what I basically uh, opened up this video with. That's how I'll be managing that trade. If that trade fails, then I'll try another one at uh, perhaps 3850, and then another one at um, at the 4,000 level um, for that directional trade, and I'll be doing it on the June futures as they have uh, they, they have they, they they have significant significantly more time. And with the way that this uh, bear market is playing out, I want to be careful with the liberties that I'm taking as far as the timing of it. So if I'm going to have a major directional trade, I'd like to put it further out because I you know, I don't think that a low a major mark cycle low is put in in March, I, well, I think it's less likely. And even if it isn't less likely, I don't care because I'd rather have, I'd rather have that flexibility within my positions to manage them going forwards by having it on a, for, on a further out expiration. So again, I actually have closed about half of it so far on my streamer account. My main account um, has closed about a quarter and I'm going to be looking to close the next, uh, the, uh, the next quarter, um, anywhere around a low 3,500, um, 
And then the way that I'll be protecting against that is, you know, as again, as long as we're below uh, above the 200 simple moving average again on the weekly, uh, which is currently coming in around 3330 now, by the way, um, I will, you know, I, I, I won't rush into a position and, and if we move up higher in the meantime, then I will probably take a position very, very likely. Tentatively speaking, that is my plan. So again, um, for me, it is that that's kind of what I decided over the weekend after a little bit of reflection. Um, it is time to get it's 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 the best way to actually manage that position going forward. So again, uh, we'll be getting rid of that and um, and essentially just rolling them over. That's all. I mean, that's really all it is to put it to put it in trader terms. Just rolling positions, man. That's all. That's all I'm doing. Um, anyways, so. Let's go back to our, yeah, let's go back to our BitMexican chart um, right over here and look at our four hour uh, dildo time frame. And you can see that uh, 200 simple moon average is coming in down around that 3540 range. We do have our eight hour uh, 21 exponential, which just crossed the upside of the green 55 around that 3530-ish range. And we do have you know our 12 hour, which is gonna be hinting at a cross pretty soon. And typically you do see a test of this area. Um, in the meantime, somewhere around 3520 is where those are gonna converge. So I do believe that price section will likely be pulled into that area. And that's where I'm gonna get rid of of, um, rid of a lot. So again, that's that's essentially my tentative plan right now, uh, and I do believe that this that this likely does come back down a little bit a little bit more before trying to get higher. Um, but like I said, you know, as long as we are within the consolidation triangle, this guy, this guy that we've been looking at that hasn't changed in literally over three months, even with the major rally of Friday, again three hundred dollar rally after three thousand dollars down, it's kind of a bit of fucking difference. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, you know, um, I, you know, I, 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 all I'm trying to say is I'd be careful with this area. Uh, a lot of people getting very, very excited. Yes, I want to get excited as well. But hey, I'm also a trader, and I don't want to like, you know, live on the streets. <laughs> like that, that's not really in my, uh, not really in my, uh, in my repertoire of shit I want to do. Um, anyways, so yeah. Because this is a consolidation triangle and because, you know, consolidations can break, um, I, you know, I've seen every goddamn consolidation break out at, technically the way that it's not quote unquote supposed to. Um, let's see what the mesh move on this consolidation would be if it breaks out to the upside again above that 3720 ish range that we just spoke on. And that would actually be pointing all the way to 4500, which would fulfill a re or not a retest, but this, this horizontal resistance around this area at 4550 coming all the way back from November on this, uh, on this major volume being thrown down all, all on the way down. So if Bitcoin did, if Bitcoin did turn up, I guess that's where a lot of people are getting the 4,500 target. It would also, uh, complete your fractal, you know, your goddamn fractal over here, uh, which is what everyone's looking at from 2014. I would still be, uh, questionative of this. I don't necessarily believe it all that much. Um, but what people are looking at is this guy here in relation to this guy over here, uh, basically saying that, well, Bitcoin put in a higher high and it, and then it tested the yellow 21 exponential and then it, and then it went down. Well, where's the 21 exponential in the weekly right now? It's actually at around four, uh, 4520. So it's, literally right there um does that mean it's going to happen for sure i mean there's a lot of different things about it we are literally below the 200 exponential for uh, technically the first time in bitcoin's history bitcoin's never actually lived below it um and opened and closed a weekly deal below it and in, 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 until 2019 um in 2014 didn't even have enough ticks to really do it so it's like you know when people say we've never broken the 200 simple moving average before it's like oh fuck oh my fucking god like yeah, you're probably not going to break it in a bull market. Nice one. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. This market is, it's the best, man. It's so good. It's, I fucking love it because there's so many characters in this market. It's like gold, but on steroids because there's like, it's like not gold bugs, but it's crypto, crypto fiends, crypto anarchists is what I think Peter Brand says, which I think is pretty hilarious. Um, uh, you know, I, I I I do love this space. I do think Bitcoin's a, in a, an incredibly innovative and an amazing idea. And as far as longevity, I do believe in it, and I do believe it can get to some of those crazier numbers. But also, the sheer del the amount of delusion in a market like this is also discomforting as well, as that typically does suggest that you well you have a lot of people to wash out, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, again, uh, looking at this. 
you know, yeah, there are a lot of similarities between it. You know, you did have this descending triangle leading down, breaking down, giving you a nice 51% drawdown over there. Then you bounce up. What was it about 20, you know, about 25% deal to body, deal to body. Well, we have a descending triangle over here in 2019 breaks down, gets your bloody eagle on to 51 and percent drawdown there. And then we have a bounce up of about you know 25 26 percent it even is done in about the same amount of time right in 2014 2015 you had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12-ish weeks before rolling on over. Well, what do we have in 2014? Or sorry, 2019. My bad, wrong slip of the tongue. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You know, 12 weeks once again. Does that mean it's going to happen on the exact same sort of time frame? No, fuck no, it's not going to. And this is why this is why fractals can be very d dubious because it will probably look, you know, a lot of times they will look similar over time, um, but that keyword being over time and time can really distort things. People were trying to overlay the market cycle cheat she calling the tops on Bitcoin each and every top uh, from from February of 2017 and I remember this everyone was fucking trying to find uh, be the genius finding the top doing it right here saying guys it's a parabolic top we're gonna go down to four hundred dollars like no it's not happening then they did it over here again at three thousand dollars that didn't work out so well so try it again because it's fractal at forty five hundred right over here and then we try and then we go ultimate fractal over here twenty thousand and then it actually does break down and that's when no one wants to believe it <laughs> which was weird you know weirdly enough um, but yeah you know in hindsight yes it makes a lot of sense just like Elliott waves just like fucking Gartley's and all that bullshit uh, as far as I know as far as I'm concerned I don't know a single professional who actually uses those those forms of technical analysis and this is coming from someone who traded on the actual floor of, of New York Stock Exchange Arca and then above Chicago Board's Ops Exchange around some of the best of the best of the best traders doesn't mean that there aren't people who use it out there who might be successful I just haven't met them so I can't verify it, verify it myself and that was one of the big purposes of me coming down to the floor of the New York Stock Exchange Arca is to is to essentially get it from the source. I want to see who is the best of the best and then learn directly from them rather than, you know, someone who might have like an avatar of a cartoon character <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Something like that. That sounds that sounds legit. Um, keep on telling me about your fucking waves, bro. Uh, anyways, okay, enough shit talking on that. Apologies about that. Um, just going into more autistic rages over here. Uh, but yeah, there are a lot of similarities between these things, but also not a lot of similarities as well. You know, we are below the 200 exponential for the first time in Bitcoin's history. We are, um, we are essentially nowhere, <laughs> nowhere near the 200 exponential as well. We have actually gotten, we actually uh, did close back above the 10 simple moon average, the 3619 uh, area on last night's weekly dildo. So that has been set in stone. That is confirmed. And that's the first time that we've actually closed a weekly dildo above it since end of August, 2018. It's been a long time. It's literally been like what about uh, four, five, six months, something like that. It's been it's been a long time. So this is this is a big deal right here, and that's what makes me think that yes, while we are still technically below that resistance, it can very easily take it out, and we can very easily have a run and even test you know the 200 exponential, which is where 4100. But as long as we're opening and closing weekly doubles below it, it's just another one like that. Now, of course, when when looking at the monthly, when looking at the lower time frames, funnily enough, it's like the highest time frame, the monthly, which is obviously not the highest time frame, but we can't really use a yearly in fucking crypto. Um, but when looking at, you know, a monthly and then looking at, you know, maybe like a four hour or a daily, it, you know, nothing's really changed. We're actually at pretty major resistance. But when looking at a weekly, you can see very easily that uh, if this thing did want to, it it, it very easily could actually test 4,000 ish area. Um, so that's what I would be very defensive against. And again, and again, when it comes down to trading, you know, be rigid in your in your risk management and be flexible in your expectations. I think that's uh, I think Mark Douglas said some similar to that. Um, but that's how, how, how I suppose I might reframe it. As you can see over here on the weekly dildo time frame, last week's uh, major pump up dildo, the, the, the end of the bear market, as some have called it, uh, incredibly amazing volume. <laughs> There's a lot of participation in this rally, baby. You know that that means the market movers are just, they're just, again, they're being very sly. They don't want people to know. Or, <laughs> or good fucking luck. Again, um, is this consistent with what I typically see on a major market low? No, fuck no, it's not. Um, but again, doesn't mean it can't rally up above. And yes, we can even come all the way back up to 4,000, 4,100 and still not change the bigger picture at hand. As long as the monthly is closing below the 55 and as long as the weekly is, is closing below 4,120, really nothing's changed from the most important time frames. Yes, we can break out of the 3720 area and still wouldn't it, it wouldn't be enough juice as far as I'm concerned, although you would have a measure move pointing all the way to 4,500 and that could have dire consequences. But again, breakouts, 
fail all the time, especially a bullish breakout in a bearish market. Oh my God. Good fucking luck, man. Uh, once again, good luck. Um, so again, looking at, looking at our weekly here, spending a little bit of time, weekly stokes actually not even ticking up. Even on that last, e e e even on, even when Bitcoin went up on Friday, t literally almost 10%, weekly stokes still going down. Momentum still going down. Uh, weekly RSI, uh, have we done anything over here? We did reclaim the exponential on this guy, but still in the bearish control zone. Not really doing anything um, particularly of note. What about the jewel? What about the jewel on the weekly? The jewel told you to buy the low, but it didn't tell you to buy after. It's not really telling you much right now. It's actually not giving up too much. Uh, the daily on the jewel got the uh, got the ultimate low literally right here, perfectly. That's what you know. That's just what the jewel does, uh, right there on February seventh, or the, literally the day before that that nice rally, and. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, that's that's really all there is to be aware of. Now, let's kind of, I guess, suppose round out the discussion on why, you know, the area that we're currently at actually is a bigger resistance. And I think a lot of people are, are giving it credit for right now. Um, bringing back on our drawing tools and just looking at this area. Sorry, let's go to a bit Mexican chart uh, and getting rid of this. Let's actually put this onto the downside. We, we will look at, at, at the target to the downside if it does break down there as well. Um, but, uh, but basically what I'm looking at is our four hour RSI over here, we are actually printing some pretty heavy hidden bearish divergence. We have confirmed this as a little bit of a local top with that last uh, rejection that we just saw. And looking at the um, and looking at the RSI, we are printing a significantly higher high on the RSI in comparison to this high, back, even back over here and over here um, in, uh, in late December, early January. And what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the bulls are using more energy to get lower um, is, is kind of how I relate that idea. Uh, if we go perhaps maybe even to the 10 hour, I think that it's I think it's actually all the way up to the daily. Let's let's confirm this really quick. Um, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Bitcoin making a significantly higher on the RSI on that last little run in comparison to even this guy and and this one in uh, in in early in sorry, late December. So again, is it, but the, the, the daily is not necessarily confirmed as a local high just yet. Uh, I need to see it come a little bit lower below 35.75 on, uh, on BitMexico. Maybe if we go to a 12 hour little, it'll, yeah, the 12 hour looks a lot more like a, a local high. Um, and again, you're going to have the hidden bearish divergence there as well. Again, this point or sorry, do we have it? Yeah, we do. We do ever so slightly. Uh, yeah, we, oh, we definitely do between this point. Absolutely. Um, so again, in the lower time frames, I do think that it's more likely that we pop back down to the lower end of the 3,500 range um, and probably do bounce there. But uh, but again, I would be very cautious about being bullish right now. Um, yeah, it certainly can happen. But what I need to what I need to really see from the very low time frames is getting back above 3720. And then if that can happen, then yeah, I would, I'd be looking at 3850 and then 4000. 3850 should not be a super strong resistance. There is no other confluences in that area as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if we do put on a nice fib, uh, a, a, a nice fib, um, uh, what's it called, retracement. You can see that, uh, yeah, the 382 is basically where we got stopped at, or sorry, the 0.5 is basically where we just got stopped at as far as dildo bodies go. Uh, and the 236, sorry, let's do let's do this right. Let's make sure that we get this actually right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, 0.5 coming in right there. Um, and the 382 coming in around actually 38. So, okay, so we actually do have something coming in there. I do apologize about that. That is my fault. Let's do something like that. Around that area, it's not, it's not perfect. It doesn't need to be perfect though doesn't need to be perfect what if we use dildo bodies sometimes sometimes one side gets it better than the other typically it's bodies but not always all right do we have something better on the bodies uh, side here actually um kind of kind of as far as the overall picture goes so this actually does raise some questions uh 3500 is the critical area to be defensive of though as long as um as as long as bulls hold 3500 overall I would be looking to actually buy this area anywhere around 35, 30, 3,500 ish area. The second that that area breaks, it's once again pressure onto the downside in the sense of this can break at any moment in time. Now, why I actually would temper this and and why I do kind of have a slightly, you know, even with all that I'm saying, if, you know, that, that Bitcoin is kind of facing major resistances here. I would actually still be looking to buy this area if and when Bitcoin does come down to like mid to low 3,500. The reason why I say that is because actually going over here on GBDC, 
does mean a lot to me. GBDC does have a major gap all the way at this 469 region. That 469 region is not just a great number, but it's also going to correlate with a move probably back up to about 3850 on spot charts. So we had a phenomenal bear trap on GBDC. You know, that that's kind of what I was talking about when when I said, you know, I'm not really seeing the reaction or the volume fall through that I want to see. In fact, you printed a massive uh, hammer dildo um, uh, the uh, two days before the turnaround. And then on Friday, obviously shooting it all the way back up. So I'd imagine that we probably do pop back up into this region and that would probably put spot charts at around 3850. So that's why I do want to be a little bit defensive. I will try out a trade just because it, it meets my criteria for, you know, a decent and trade but um but again in the more in, in the more mean times i will be closing that position um you know anywhere low 3500 i'm happy to do that so 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 getting back on over here yeah there you know there certainly are things pointing in different directions um but let's talk about the fibs for a second you know bitcoin had a beautiful you know a beautiful example of, of, of how the algos essentially run the market you know you have your major drop down 50 percent down pop back up you know come back down to the 618 gets where's where's the target gonna be right over here two three it's probably gonna be like the 136 essentially pop back down to the 618 the target's gonna be 382 right over there pop back down to the 618 where's the target gonna be 0.5 right over here pops down and to the 618 and breaks it comes down to 786 spend some times here and where's you know where's the bot algo target gonna be the 0.5 now the question is where do we break on from there if you know if if, if this area gets taken out, if, if the 0.5 area gets taken out essentially, which is 3650, which is exactly where we got rejected from so far, um, if that if that actually if that area does actually get taken out to the upside, I would be looking to the 236 actually. I would actually be looking to the 236, which is all the way at 39, 3850, 3900 a share essentially. If we do pop back down to the 618 and it fails immediately it's pressure back on and i would actually become uh, uh, like more immediately bearish although yes i do still want to see 3350 ish break um first things first before getting too excited but uh but yeah just wanted to quickly get that out there uh let's go look at the longs and shorts of it all longs at uh, 32 and a quarter uh shorts at a little under 25,000 open shorts longs paying significantly more rate although not necessarily too high uh three and a half thousand opened uh sorry three and a half thousand uh, shorts are hedged so that's 21 and a quarter uh opened naked so again you still got that severe imbalance again another thing that's really heavily in the favor of lows not being in i want to see that the opposite i need to see that the opposite when you're coming out of a bear market, you want to see everyone trying to fucking short. You don't want to see everyone trying to fucking buy. That's a big problem. That's a really big problem. So how do you even get the sentiment for that? Because people can't even people can't even comprehend that right now because there hasn't been a legitimate scare. You haven't had your black swan event, which is typically what does happen when the major low is being put in. Like you have some sort of like just major, major black, black swan event. I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with the with the uh, Quadriga situation. Um, if not, go head over to uh, to Crypto Zombies channel. He did a great, uh, great synopsis of it um, on the video titled uh, could this be the next black swan? I thought something like that. It's really fuck. It's really well done, though. So I do highly recommend it. And K-Dub's just a cool person in general. Um, so check that out. Uh, could that be it? I mean, I don't, you know, again, I don't know. I'm not here to speculate. I'm not a fucking forensic scientist who's going to solve that sort of crime, which sounds really fucking sketch. But what I can say is, is that, uh, you know, that's typically what something like that would typically do it, um, so to speak. Now, of course, all the writings in the pudding so far, or whatever the saying goes, no one even knows what that saying is anyways. Um, <laughs> or if you do know what that saying is, well, please let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but hey, when looking at these sorts of things, um, that's how you get that more erratic flush on the last level when everyone thinks that the bottom's now in so we are starting to get to that more critical level where everyone thinks that the bottom is in could we have another you know rally up could we even go into the four thousands absolutely absolutely and that'd be even better for getting people on the wrong side of the trade um but typically when when everyone thinks that the bottom is in that's the time when the floor gets dropped out another 50 percent about you know i'm just you know i'm pulling out numbers but in general general generally speaking another 50 percent and then the low the real low is put in um so again that's that's kind of my thoughts on that now let's you know we did the measure move for this for this triangle consolidation breaking up to the upside that was 45 uh 100 ish area um if it breaks out to the downside i'd be looking towards 
or or it would suggest a target down around uh, 20, 25 to 2600 ish area, which if you remember was right around where the monthly uh, 89 exponential on the BLX index was around this uh, cyan moving average down around this area, yeah, 2450. And if we go back to our bitstamp chart with all of the history on it, we can actually denote a few more things. That's also the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around there, which is the which is where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014, by the way, over here. And you do see some nice horizontal uh, historical horizontal on trend lines coming around this area down from this area uh down from this very 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 uh high volume area uh, historically speaking and also if we do put on the volume profile you'll see that there's some massive whoops let's actually change this around let's do maybe let's do like 80 row size let's try this yeah it, you'll see you'll see some massive high value nodes being done in this area and you actually notice that you know as soon as bitcoin loses about the 32 fi 3300 to 3250 range uh it's pretty much a straight flush down so just like you saw at 6000 once you broke that area you know it's it's <laughs> you saw how fast that one went you know basically from 6000 to 3000 in a span of a week or two with very little stops um it would likely be the same thing if, if we broke 3250 to 3300, I'd imagine, uh, down to the mid 2000s, which is where I'd be looking towards. Again, I, you know, yeah, there there are targets lower, but I want to see the reaction first. I mean, could this be a could this be a reversal zone? Absolutely, but I want to see the reaction. Just like this area that we just looked at, you know, it's the the reaction was pretty lackluster, pretty uninspiring. Um, <clears throat> I'd want to see it first before making a judgment. I, I don't see how you could call it before it actually happens. That's very misleading and very naive to think because it just shows that you don't understand or that person does not understand how major mark cycle lows are being put in, which is essentially by, you know, major entities with extremely deep pockets, you know, billion dollars plus um, coming to the market. And whenever they come into the market, they are going to leave waves. Understand the perspective. They want to accumulate as much as possible, as low as possible. And how do you do that? Well, 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 you got to buy up the actual blood and there's no, and once that happens, there's no questions asked that the big boys are in the market. So they know that uh, once they do it and they reveal their hand, they, they they won't get a chance there again, because what happens? Well, you got you got an example right here in 2014. Look at the volume characteristics of this. Look at how you bounced up and it doesn't return within about 30 percent of that low of that spike low ever again, ever li literally ever again, ever again. I mean, and, and really more so like about 45 percent. Um, so again, you know, looking at these sorts of things, uh, don't really, don't really like what I see. I mean, uh, several other things suggesting that I do want to bring up the crypto fear and greed index, um, here, uh, again, uh, we are taking a 40, which is just regular fear. You see how fast this thing goes up last week. We were at extreme fear, literally below 20 for a second as Bitcoin was hovering around the low or the, the low 3,400 range with just a $200 increase, essentially. Bitcoin has gone from extreme fear to and, and basically double that up to 40, which is not, you know, obviously not nearly as bad. Um, now, my point is, is that during a bear market, when it gets into extreme fear area, it's actually not the best bottoming signal. It does tell you to be cautious, which I do agree with, but it, it can stay there for a while. In fact, just a good example is you were in extreme or sorry, Bitcoin was in extreme fear, like literally teens in the teens um, for almost a month from November 20th to December 17th when it actually did turn around. So yes, it spent literally about a month there at the lows. And then yes, it, it eventually did rally off from there and, and, and the sentiment did did rise back up to what we saw at the top at, on January 6th, January, January 5th. But my point is, is that this indicator is much better at calling tops and bottoms when we're in a bear market cycle. And it's gonna be the opposite in a bull market cycle. But you can see, looking at these tops, looking at these declining tops, that we have a trend line actually forming, going all the way back from you know February essentially. You remember that bounce off February, you know February six thousand to twelve thousand in a span of a week or two. That was incredible, um, and sentiment got up pretty damn high after that, about 60, 74, which is the highest that it's been in the last year. Uh, after that, you know, it was declining tops ever since, and we were once again getting to kind of like the top area of, you know, if you can just imagine a trend line in that area, it would be around where we currently are. Uh, could could get up a little bit more. In fact, I again, I don't, I don't see any problem with Bitcoin rallying a little bit here and taking out and even and even breaking the consolidation, the 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 triangular consolidation that we're working on to the upside. That'd be great for getting more people, um, you know, more people bullish on the wrong side of the trade and then, you know, having like another false breakout. Uh, but again, I just want to I just want to point that into or put that in perspective uh, that I I am looking for the next big sell. It's just is this area right here? I mean, I think that this is worth a trade based off the monthly based off the lower time frames. 
but not guaranteed. I mean, nothing's guaranteed. Uh, I, I it wouldn't. It really wouldn't set too many alarms off if we came all the way up to forty fifty. Um, you know, you still you still have your weekly lower highs. You still have two hundred exponential in the weekly still. You know, being defended essentially. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts on that. As long as the monthly closes below thirty six uh, seventy, uh, that's you know that's that's defended as well as far as the bears are concerned. And there's you know what three weeks to go, a little bit less than three weeks to go on the monthly. So yeah, um, long's getting up pretty damn high again, but they can certainly get higher. Uh, anytime that anytime that it gets around that three thousand level, is where or sorry thirty three thousand level is where I start to is where I start to notice that major dumps have occurred in Bitcoin's history. Each and every one of these spikes is a major dump. Actually, um, sometimes it does get above, and when it does get above, it's when it comes back below that the actual dump is initiated. You can see that we actually spiked there. Uh, last week, and we're coming back up once again. We're making an inverted head and shoulders on the longs chart, bro. You know what that means? Cock and balls coming right up. No, of course not, man. You can't make formations and all these sorts of things. It does not matter. People were con trying to call like a cup and handle on the shorts chart last year. Like they're uh, they trying to call it right here. It's like, no, no, you can't do that. They're very, they're very, 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 very incomplete pieces of the uh, of the whole. Um, but yeah, I do also want to bring up this uh, spies. Um, I do think that traditional markets and Bitcoin are actually uh, a lot more correlated on the major critical moves that they make. Now, obviously, not on the consolidations. It seems to me that when spies, oh, oh sorry, when Bitcoin's consolidating, when spies consolidating, spy typically go moves up. Bitcoin typically moves sideways, which is what we're seeing. Oh, you motherfucker, trading view! Don't do this right now, you bastard! Ah, oh, you motherfucker! All right, so everything's loading. What I want to show is is that there actually is a trade to be made on, on spies right now. God damn it, this is so fucking annoying. And I'm going to an autistic rage, which just makes me look like a moron. Let's see, Litecoin loads. Come on, spies, you need to load. All right, well, I guess I'll just, I'll just explain this one. <laughs> what I'm looking at on spies right now is we actually do have something that could resemble a local top, um, but there, there's a trade to be made. It's, of, of course, nothing's ever guaranteed, but we had our first down week on spies. Uh, no, sorry, it wasn't. It wasn't down. It was not. It did not close down. But, um, but we did print a doji dildo, and as long as we're below the high of that, you know, you could. It, it could be a preliminary trade. Typically, you'd want to see the low taken out first. And in fact, that's what I'd say is a little bit more important to be confirmed as a lower high, to be confirmed as another local high. Uh, but for now, you know, as as long as we're below that, uh, assuming that we actually take out the low of that, then that you know that uh, that's probably a nice trade. Um, and I guess that I'll just move on now to Mr. Ripples. Now, Mr. Ripples is also uh, exercising extreme caution because remember, even on Friday, when we actually set in the in stone this this last three-day dildo, Mr. Ripples caught wind of the rally too, right? It put in a nice bullish engulfing, but still stifled by the red 10 simple moon average and since then has just been held back below it and still shuffled right back down, losing the daily 21 exponential so far. I mean, it's, it's actually open below it, I believe. Uh, yeah, it has. Um, by a bit, by a very small amount, but it has. And again, you know, when the alts are not following the generals, you know, when the soldiers are not following the generals, like the lower mark cap not following the higher mark cap, that's typically a bad sign. At least that's what I notice in traditional markets. Um, and we do have some pretty nasty things happening on the three-day dildo time frame here. We do have the 89 crossing the downside of the 200. I mean, not necessarily something to be super aware of, but uh, we do have, you know, uh, this area here, 34, 34 and a half cents. As long as you're below that, I mean, there's nothing new happening. Just like Bitcoin below 4, 000, you know, 4,100, nothing new. Above 28 cents, though, hard to get too bearish. You know, you can't get too, too damn bearish. Let's go look at Stellar. Stellar. What happened on Friday? We come down, put a nice bullet, or is this a bullish engulfing? No, it's not. But but what happens? Just retest the resistance, and then the, and then on the next three day dildo, down. It's like okay, great, good one. Three day dildo death cross right over there. Still trending below all major moving averages. Not good. Uh, then Mr. Buterall, what has Mr. Buterall done? Uh, pretty relatively well, actually relatively pretty damn well. But look at the three day right here. Three day test the yellow twenty one exponential. So far, it's printing a doji right now. We have, we will close this three-day dildo later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will get a new one tonight. So if it closes like this, that is, you know, it, it is a little bit, a uh, little bit more ominous. And again, look at the volume characters on Friday's uh, Friday's green dildo party. Not very girthy. Not very veiny. Not very impressive. Not very erect. It's not what you want. Maybe it is. But not for me. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, you know, it's it's still got a lot of a lot of hours in the day left to go. But um, so far, you know, is is questionable. What about Mrs. Lightquin over here? Mrs. Lightquin having the best reaction out of the whole bunch. 
but find resistance right at this level here. Your former, you know, your former breakdown trend line at around forty-seven and a half dollars. And what are we forming? Forming this, forming a rising wedge, which rising wedge in an overall bearish market. Uh, I would be careful. I would be careful. So, again, you know, Litecoin is Mrs. Litecoin is the best argument for Bitcoin coming out of the bear market. But if only Mrs. Litecoin is doing it and not the other majors, you know, making higher highs, uh, and Litecoin still getting still getting rejected by this area so far, doesn't mean it's doesn't mean the party's over just yet. It just means that we're probably going to come back down. Um, you know, is, is that enough? I'd say, historically speaking, it, it is not. Led, it, I don't believe it's led the market, historically speaking. I know a lot of people say that, though. Um, maybe I am wrong on that. I think it, may, I, I think it did actually lead the market to the downside. It, it did break first. Feel, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, that uh, when did Bitcoin break? I believe it was the, yeah, I believe it was this area. Huh, I, I'd have to double check on that. I might be wrong on that one. Uh, it has, has Litecoin led the market before. Um, but my point is here is that, hey, when looking at Mrs. Litecoin, 50, uh, what is it, $47.5 needs to be broken to the upside in order to get a little bit more excited about this bitch. If that can happen, though, then then very little stopping it from about 69 bucks. So again, could, you know, cl uh, best best looking one out of the top, out of the top mark cap coins, but still uh, not getting above the critical area needed to to make me a believer. However, again, th you know, Mrs. Litecoin, you can really make a much better argument for just about everything um, on it. Uh, higher high, really good volume on the bottom, uh, great reaction off the bottom. Um, yeah, and really good volume on this last pop here that we just saw on Friday. So yeah, uh, that's what I'd say about that. Uh, anyways, we're gonna go back on over to Mr. Bitcoin and wrap this bitch up. Uh, before um, before I sign off, and then I'll be back on later tonight. But anyways, uh, consolidation triangle still holding. Still got 37, uh, 20 resistance to the upside. Still got 33, 50 support to the downside. Whichever one breaks first, going to be the next likely uh, big direction. If it breaks to the upside, then 38, 50 is the next resistance that I see. Although I think it's a little bit more likely likely that we actually do have a nice shot to 4,000 a share. Yeah. By the same token, to the downside, if I mean, basically, if 35, 30 breaks, I would actually immediately become pretty bearish looking for lower lows. Um, but that'd be my opinion. I still need to see 33, uh, 50 break down here. Um, if that breaks, and yeah, technically you still got this support, you know, 35, uh, sorry, 32, 50, the mesh move off this symmetrical triangle, also your former lows. But at that point in time, I'd, I'd really start looking towards new lows overall into the 2000s, like we uh, like we just looked at. So for now, um, all, you know, a lot of lower time frames, signaling some bearish divergence, uh, Stoke, Stokes coming down, all for all sort of suggesting uh, Little bit, little bit of down. This is the critical area to hold for the bulls. If the bulls fail, thirty-five, thirty, things get a lot more nasty. If if the bulls hold it, then we probably do give another try to this upper resistance. I'd imagine. Uh, but for now, that's that's gonna do it for now, I suppose. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Hopefully, we can get some more uh, some more actual action. It's a lot more fun when it when there is action, and uh, and I you know it's it's <laughs> I'm I'm really looking forward to that, and I do feel like this week could see some fireworks. So again, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you on this lovely Monday. Hope you're having the best Monday possible. I'll be back on later, and look forward to seeing you there. Take care.